So there are three major lines of defenses in the immune system. The first line of defense are the barriers to infection, and these are covered in the beginning of Chapter 2, and we're actually not going to spend a whole lot of time on them. Um, the main defense that uh, we talk about a lot are the tight junctions that exist in the epithelial cells that line your organs and tissues that are present on your skin, uh, and these are barriers to infection that are going to prevent pathogens from penetrating and invading organs and tissues. Um, and the barrier defenses, um, when they are damaged due to tissue injury, to cuts, for example, um, they're going to allow pathogens to enter organs and tissues um, and begin reproducing and unfortunately cause disease. Um, the um, other lines of uh, defenses that are barriers can also be classified in terms of chemical, biological, and other mechanical defenses, and these are covered in Chapter 2. Uh, these should have been covered in your freshman biology classes, and actually we're not going to spend much time on them in this course. Um, you should know they exist, uh, things like the low pH of the stomach, um, or lysozyme in tears, um, that are, has an antibacterial property, but again, this is not the uh, main uh, part of the course. What I would like to talk more about are the um, innate and acquired immune defenses, which are the majority of the course. So unit one of the course is going to cover innate immunity. And so what do we mean when we talk about innate immunity, which are covered in chapters two and three of the textbook? Uh, the m first weapon we're going to learn about is the complement system, which you may have briefly touched upon in freshman biology. It turns out it's a very complicated system of proteins that are present in your uh, humors, in your fluids, and these proteins um, will have the ability to recognize a pathogen, viruses and bacteria, etc., as well as have an effector function and destroy a pathogen. So we're going to cover in great detail how the complement system recognizes pathogens and then uses its effector function to destroy pathogens. Uh, innate immunity also covers phagocytes, cells like macrophages and neutrophils, and these cells also have the ability to recognize pathogens, and uh, their effector function involves phagocytosis to destroy pathogens. So we're going to cover them as well in chapter 2 and 3. Um, inflammation is another innate immune defense, and we'll talk about how inflammation works. Um, something else we're going to cover in great detail are cytokines. These are small protein molecules that are involved in communication. That was another theme touched on in the last video. When one cell wants to tell another cell or organ or tissue what to do, it uses communication molecules. These are called cytokines. They're small proteins, and we're going to learn many different cytokines in this course, and you're going to have to know what cells release them and why, where do these cytokines go, what's their target, and what's their effect on their target. So we'll learn about many different cytokines. Um, the last two defenses that are talked about in innate, innate immunity are interferons, which again are more like uh, communication molecules, and NK cells, natural killer cells, which we're not going to go into too much detail on because just because they're, there's not a lot known about NK cells. Um, they're pretty confusing, um, what we do know, so we probably won't spend a whole lot of time on NK cells. These are weapons of innate immunity. So what's great about them is they work really quickly. They recognize pathogens very fast, minutes to hours, and they exert their effector function very quickly, again, minutes to hours. The problem with innate immunity is it doesn't work all that great because it doesn't improve, it doesn't adapt to the pathogen. So um, it can't get better over time. Um, still pretty good, and we're going to go into detail into all these innate immune defenses. Uh, but again, uh, good, but not going to be uh, able to rid the body of everything. So those are innate immune defenses we'll cover in Unit 1. Uh, unit 2 and 3 will cover adaptive immunity, also known as acquired immunity. Sometimes I'm going to use the term adaptive immunity, sometimes I might say acquired immunity. They mean the same thing. And this is broken down into two arms, which again you might have learned in freshman biology. Uh, humoral immunity, which is going to be Unit 2, uh, is sometimes known, at, known as antibody-mediated immunity, and this is simply B cells have the ability to recognize a pathogen and secrete antibodies that will be able to have an effective function 
and neutralized or have another way to remove pathogens from the body. So B cells making antibodies. Uh, this is going to be unit two. We'll have to learn about B cells, where they come from, how they're made, uh, how they make these wonderful weapons called antibodies, uh, how B cells recognize a pathogen and attack a pathogen. That is all unit two. Uh, unit uh, and covered in chapters four, six, nine, and ten of the textbook. Uh, unit three, the other arm of adaptive immunity, is something called cell-mediated immunity. Uh, these are T cells. There are different types of T cells in the body, but T cells um, also have the ability to recognize a pathogen, recognize an infection, and then promote clearance of the infection. Uh, and we'll have to learn about the different types of T cells, how T cells recognize a pathogen, and what they do after they recognize it. T cells are covered in chapters 5, 7, 8, and 10 of your textbook. And again, that is chapter, uh, that is unit 3 in the course. The thing about adaptive immunity is their ability to recognize and unleash an attack takes usually days, if not weeks, to occur. So it's a very slow um, ability to recognize uh, and a pathogen and release its effector function. So while innate immunity is going on, trying to keep the pathogen in check, adaptive immunity is going on as well. Uh, but once adaptive immunity unleashes its attack, it's a very um, specific attack. It's very selective for the pathogen. It matches the path pathogen, and it's very effective because it evolves to fit the pathogen. So we'll have to talk about um, how the uh, adaptive immune system uh, evolves to fit its pathogen in order to remove it from the system. Um, and adaptive immunity, both humoral and cell-mediated, are what provide a person with lifelong protection or memory, and we'll have to cover that as well um, when we cover that in this course. Um, we will cover throughout um, Units 1, 2, and 3, immunodeficiencies, and that's covered in Chapter 13 of the text. If there is a genetic defect in some aspect of the immune system, in, innate or acquired, uh, you're going to be missing an ability to attack a pathogen, and that could lead to uh, immunodeficiencies. We'll cover those in this course. Um, in Unit 4, we're going to use everything we've learned in Units 1, 2, and 3 to talk about defects or manipulation of the immune system. So we have to cover autoimmune reactions and allergic reactions. These are issues with the immune system. In allergic reactions, which we'll cover in Chapter 14, the immune system is recognized something that's not a pathogen. Maybe it's recognized pollen or peanuts. So we'll have to learn about how does the immune system recognize a non-pathogen and why does that cause... Um, allergic reactions, and possibly death. Uh, we're going to cover in Chapter 16 autoimmune reactions. What happens when the immune system recognizes self as pathogen? And the immune system therefore attacks the body. Why does it do it? How does it do it? How does that cause uh, damage to the body? We'll cover that in Chapter 16. Uh, manipulating the immune system. Vaccinations, Chapter 11. So we'll talk about how vaccines work. Uh, transplantation, that's another manipulation of the immune system. In order to put somebody's organ inside another person, we have to convince the immune system not to attack that organ, because that organ is non-self. So we'll talk about uh, tissue rejection and transplantation in Chapter 15. Lastly, we'll talk about manipulation of the immune system uh, in uh, treating cancer. So it turns out there are these immunotherapies where uh, scientists are able to manipulate the immune system in order to uh, have the immune system go after cancer cells. And we'll learn about that at the end of the course in Chapter 17. So that's an overview of the immune system Part 2, and uh, that's all for now.